Hello, so today we're going to go over an 820-2915 board that was not charging the battery that had no light on the DC inboard. So this person replaced their own DC inboard. After replacing the DC inboard, uh, they've noticed they still don't have a green light. Today we have this machine working with a green light. So let me just show you that. So when I plug this in, I get a green light on the charger and my fans are spinning which is more than I can say it did before now I'm gonna go over what it is you troubleshoot when you don't have a green light now as I've mentioned in other videos the first thing that I check before anything else is something called the one wire circuit so on this particular board you have something called the one wire circuit let's move this crap out of the way uh, which, sen which goes from the sense pin of the adapter over to these two things over here. So let me show you a little bit of what that looks like. So the actual MagSafe adapter has something here called Adapter Sense. Let's zoom in so you can see. So this comes from signal on the adapter from here. And it goes to these two ICs. So it goes to U6900 and U6901. Now, one of the very, very common things that happens on the A1278 boards, because on A1278 boards, this circuit is not at the bottom. So on this machine, the, that circuit is right in this area over here. On A1278 boards, it's usually right at the tip, right where the water is going to get absorbed. So one of the very, very common faults is that this 3.42 volt pin, which is very, very small, winds up getting corroded. So as I've said before, you have a lot of these little spots on the board where you have these voltages, like here it says PP3V42G3 hot. What this means is pretty much 3.42 volts is here. Now one of the very, very common issues that you're going to encounter is that this has no 3.42 volts going to it, and that's going to be the cause of your fault. So just to give you a little idea of how this works, when it senses from the, this from the adapter, so once you plug in your MagSafe, your charger, <coughs> So once you plug this in, it sends a signal through over here. And also, you have this voltage going to the rest of the computer. So when it senses this from the adapter, and it senses this thing over here called SMCBCACOC, when those two things are present, this chip is going to create something called Sys1 wire, which tells the system it's OK to use the charger, it's OK to accept power from it, you can turn on off of it. Now, there are two, again, you two usual faults. The first is that this chip over here does not have 3.42 volts going to it. The second fault is usually that you don't have this SMC BC ACOC signal. Now on this board, what I did is I measured, and let me show you, just show you the voltage that you should be getting in all these points. And I had my 3.42 volts here, but I didn't have SMC BC ACOC. So let's open. Uh, one of the things that I hate about this software, I got this 4K TV with the sole purpose of being able to make it easier to view these things, and this software is so such crap, such dog shit that you can only use it in like this much space. But what do you expect for some crap that was made in the 90s and never updated? You can't realistically expect much. So what this is telling me is that let's see. Come on. So right over here is where I'm going to find those two. So let's measure on the board and see what we get at a couple of different points. And again, this is the fixed board. So the first thing that you should get, obviously, is the first thing that I measured for was the 3.42 volts at the PP3 at pin five. So pin 5 of U6901. So pin 5 of U6901 is going to be, that's pin 4, right over here. 
So I measure that on my board. Yeah, my board. I have to constantly look up and down to see where I am. On this crap software. That 3.42 volts is the power supply voltage for that IC, for that thing to run. That is the... Now. now, the other thing that I'm supposed to have, which I did not have before, was the SMC-BC ACOC voltage. So right now, when I measure it, because it's on, obviously I have that. So I'm going to measure it pin 4. And again, this thing tells me that this is pin 4 right over here. If you're, get, if you're trying to you know, wonder where, how are you supposed to know where these pins are or what they do, but well, you're not. The software tells you. See, I got the 3.42 there. That's what I didn't have before. Now, again, what this here is going to do... Uh, let's what this thing is going to do is once it has this coming through here, it's going to send out this pulse to this chip. And when this chip has the pulse coming from here, the SMC BCA cock, and it has this adapter sense signal coming in, it's going to send out one wire. So this middle transistor that you couldn't see because I was off the screen, this thing, one, th once this chip sees that SMC BCA cock is coming and that adapter sense is coming, then it sends out sys1 wire, which tells it to turn on. So I had adapter sense, obviously. I measured it, but you know, I know that this charger works because I've used it on many MacBooks. I have the power supply voltage coming to U6901, but what I did not have was SMC BCA cock. So I went down, and I want to see where SMC BCA cock comes from, because that's going to be a very important one and something that you need to learn. So what we get to over here is the ISL6259. This is the charging circuit. Now, come on, TV. Anti-allies. Anti-allies a little bit. Ah, oh. My PDF reader just sucks sometimes. It sucks because I'm recording real-time HD video while simultaneously asking for it to anti-allies this page. If I wasn't recording HD video, this would actually look really, really good. But it doesn't. Yeah, let's see what I can do about that. Yeah, just text in. Here we go. Let's had to change some settings here. So SMC BC ACOC comes from ISL 6259. Now see over here where it says out? That means that that is a signal that goes out. Now, what this do, when this chip is working and when it senses things coming properly from the charger, it's going to send out this SMC BCA cock signal. And I was getting no SMC BCA cock from here. Now, some of the things that you need to check around this circuit if there's no SMC BCA cock, the first one is charger ACN. So let's move a little bit over so you can see what that is. Charger ACN is over here. This is zoom so charger ACN is created by this voltage divider of a 30.1 kilo ohm resistor and a 9.31 kilo ohm resistor that go between the charger up here which is not loading because my PDF reader is getting skull fucked as I record real time video here we go so from adapter from directly from the voltage coming out of the adapter it goes to this voltage divider over here uh, which, you know, is going to ground so that it can create 4 volts. So it's going to turn that power from the adapter into 4 volts. So the first thing to check is that these two resistors are good and that you're getting that 4 volts there. Now, I measured that point. I measured between R7010 and R7011. So let's see where that is, just so you know, again, I can baby step you through it. R7010, R7011. Now, before I actually measure resistance, I measure that there's voltage there. Because if there's voltage there, then I know that the resistors are good and I don't have to even bother changing the mode of my multimeter. So here we go, we got R7010 and R7011. And charger AC, and as you can see, these two resistors meet at one point. So I can measure in either one of those and see what I got. Now, I know in this case that I got uh, something around 3 or 4 volts. That's what you're supposed to have there. So let's see what I get at that point on mine. Now again, this is working. 
See, I got 3.82. Uh, that, honestly, that's close enough. It's supposed to be 4, but who really cares? It's good enough. And again, I was getting that voltage even before. So I, now the other thing to look at, and this is a little trickier, is something called a current sense circuit. Uh, this is a little bit more tricky and a little bit more confusing, but I'm going to try to explain it as, simple as simply as I can. Uh, M PDF reader, come on. Oh my god, yeah, you really can't record real-time video while anti-analyzing a 4K <laughs> PDF. Okay. Uh, again, uh, I am a capitalist, you know, if you want these videos to be a little bit better, you know, you are free to write out a check to Mac Laptop Repair Specialist for the uh, cost of a new editing workstation. I am doing these videos off of a Lenovo T440P laptop with integrated video. So yeah, the 4K screen, recording two raw video streams uh, in real time and yeah so over here we have the current sensing circuit so this is pretty much the power that's coming from the charger now in order to tell how much power is coming fr in order to now one of the things that this does is there's a resistor here right so this resistor, it, it's kind of like a little dual resistor. It has one line, it's two resistors in one kind of. So you got this over here that goes to the transistor that sends power to the rest of the machine. And then you have the other resistor over here between pins four and three. Now this resistor over here is going to go towards this little current sensing circuit. So over here on the ISL, you have something called charger CSIP and charger CSIN. Now what these are going to are these two resistors that are attached to this resistor over here. The whole point behind this is that b this is a 0.02 ohm resistor. There's going to be a very, very small drop in voltage across this resistor. So what this is going to, so there's going to be a very bit little, right over here in this resistor there's going to be a small drop in power. Now what this is doing is on each end of this resistor, it's measuring how much power there is. So what it's going to be able to do is it's going to actually be able to calculate how much power the system is taking from the charger be based on the difference in power between these two. So based on the power drop between the top of this resistor at 0 0.02 ohms and the bottom of that resistor at 0 0.02 ohms, it's actually going to be able to tell whether or not uh, the system is grabbing too much power from the charger. If the system is trying to grab infinite power from the charger, it's obviously going to turn off the charging circuit so some crap doesn't blow up in your face or you know your MacBook doesn't explode in your face while you're eating dinner. That would be very, very bad, and that's why the circuit exists. So one of the things that you should check after you see that your charger AC in is good is that everything in this circuit is good. Are there corroded traces? Are there corroded board vias? Are these resistors the, uh, you know, the proper value? If one of these resistors here is 10 ohms and the other the one is 500 kilo ohms, obviously the system is going to turn off because it's not going to know how much power it's, it's taking and it's going to say just to be safe, just so I don't explode on my owner's face, I'm going to turn off the charger. So R7020, R7021, and R7022. That's the other thing that you check. And I checked this, and everything checked out perfectly. And again, this was not a liquid damaged board. This board was not liquid damaged in any way. so It didn't look liquid damaged, so I didn't bother with that. Now, what I, so I decided, since everything checks out, and this entire circuit is good, it must be a bad ISL. This must be the bad chip. So I decided, let's replace this, and after replacing that chip, I had my SMC BCA cock voltage, and as you can see, the machine turns on just fine. And also, since I co completely forgot to do this over the course of the video, I figure I should show you a little bit under the microscope uh, what these chips look like on this board. So U6900 and U6901, those... Or over here. So U6900 and U6901 are going to be these two. So this one over here and this one. So I was measuring the 3.42 volts right over here. I was measuring SMC BCA cock over here. This is where you measure and see if one wire is coming out. And the ISL6259 itself is right over here. 
So these two were the charger AC and resistors that I was checking. And this over here is my ISL. This is the chip that I had to replace because it was bad. Now, after I replaced that chip, I noticed that SMC BCA cock was being created. Again, I checked every single part of my board, and everything checked out perfectly fine. All the signals were there that were supposed to be, all the power supply voltages were there that were supposed to be. The one thing that was actually missing was this SMC BCA cock. So I figured if everything is proper around this chip, what I should do is replace this. And again, one of the things that kills me when people start asking me these questions, one of the things that truly kills me is when people say, what chip controls the charger light? What chip controls the power of the machine? It's like, you, I, there, there really is no way around using your brain. You do actually have to measure. You do have to figure out what the specific problem is. Because again, I'll have people call and they'll be like, like, so what fuse do you replace when the green light's not coming on? Like, no, 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 no. And again, this is not a... You know, th this is this is not like a microwave oven. This is not a you know, you, 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 it's not that simple. It's not a light switch. It's a computer. It's a complex thing. And in order to figure out the problem, you have to do a little bit of troubleshooting, and you do have to get a get a little bit of a basic understanding of how it works. And one of the ways to get a great understanding of how it works, if you don't know how it works, you don't know what's supposed to be there, is to start with. Um, is to start with boards that work. So let's say you don't know what SMC BCA cock is supposed to be. You could just look at a board just like this one that works and measure, and then when you see there's three volts there and there's not on this one, you kind of get an idea of what's supposed to be there and what's not supposed to be there. Again, I don't know what an ACOC is. Like to this day, to you know, October 11th, 2014, I have no clue what ACOC stands for. And I don't care <laughs> because I don't need to. But you do need to know a certain amount of stuff you do need to do, do a little bit of research if you want to solve these problems, which means that you, know, you, you have to get yourself out of the mindset that I'm just going to replace a fuse or I'm going to copy and paste the solution this person had. Like, this person didn't have a green light because R7021 is bad. Let me replace R7021. Don't do things because the internet tells you. You look at it, the circuit. You, tr you try to get an understanding of what it does. You measure around. If you have no understanding of what it does, you can still measure around and see what's, if it matches the schematic. You find the point at which something that's supposed to be there is missing, and then you ask yourself why. Analytical thinking, that's what you want to get into. You want to train your brain to think analytically and to solve problems analytically. So you look at what's going on, and then you try to you ask questions, you try to figure out how it works, and then you figure out what it is that you have to do. Don't take somebody else's solution and apply it to your problem. And that's it for today.